Right, let's go back to Clint and have a look at a few final things. So I'm going to go back into my widgets tab. And now let's have a look at adding some footer links. So I'm going to add two new footer links. I'm going to click on this button that says new link. And in this first field, we've got a label. And I'm going to change this to say mind map. So one of the things you can do in Clint is you can add a link to see your mind map. Your mind map is basically your storyboard. So you can allow your user or your audience to see how your storyboard looks in this kind of mind map form. And we'll take a look to see how that looks in a minute. I'm going to add one more link. And I'm going to call this Twitter. And I'm going to open a URL. I'm just going to go back into Chrome for a minute. I'm going to go and get my Twitter account. Okay, so there's my URL for my Twitter profile. If I go back to Clint, paste it in. Now in my footer, there'll be a link to my Twitter. Okay, so we've added this mind map. Let's have a quick look at this tab up the top to see what options that gives us. Okay, so we've got mind map display settings, display sequence descriptions, display watermark, display link arrows. You can change the size of your sequences. So at the moment we've got our large sequences being 200 pixels, our medium being 120 and our small being 50. And you can change some of the colors you've used. If I click on this preview button, we can actually see how it looks. Okay, and there's our mind map. So you should be able to see it pretty much looks exactly how our storyboard looks within Clint. The only difference is you've now got round sequences instead of square sequences, but you can see all of our links and you can basically see the structure of our documentary. Now it's up to you whether you want to add a mind map to your interactive documentary. You might feel that it gives too much away about the structure. So if that's how you feel, don't add it. The same with the index. If you feel the index allows your audience to jump to points throughout your documentary that you don't want them to be jumping to, turn your index link off in your footer. Okay, so let's go back to Clint again. Okay, so also under the widgets tab, you've got this search option and this map menu option. I'm not gonna go over these today. I'm gonna just gloss over them and you can explore them if you want to actually use them. The final thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the share tab. So in this share tab, you've got options that revolve around your audience being able to share your project. For example, official URL of the project webpage. So I can click on that. And mine's going to be uploaded to so mine's going to be uploaded to my website robmonday.co.uk forward slash freegan. You can also fill in a default Twitter message that you want to be shared when someone shares your documentary online. Okay, so there's a customized Twitter message. You can also select which social networks you allow people to share it over. And then finally, you've got this share window. So down the bottom in your footer, there's a little link that says share. And these are all the things that will show. And pretty much all you can do in here is just edit the labels for the options you have. The final tab in here, the mini player, Again, I'm going to kind of gloss over for now. I don't think it's that important that we go over it. If you want to explore what it does and how it works, just go into the mini player tab and have a look at the options you've got. I generally tend to leave these as they are, as the default options. But if you want to have a look, go in and play around and see what they do. Okay, so let's save these changes. And now our project is ready to be exported and uploaded online. So I'm going to save one last time. And I would suggest the final thing you do before you export is actually run your project and take some time to go through it. You don't want to be exporting your project, finding a mistake, having to re-export it and re-upload it. That's where the process can get a little bit tiresome. If you keep finding mistakes and you have to re-export and re-upload over and over again, you're going to get tired of that process very quickly. Okay, so let's pretend that everything in our project is fine. I'm totally happy with it and I'm ready to export. I'm just going to close a couple of these browser tabs down. I've got a few too many open. And let's go back to Clint.
Okay, once you're 100% sure you're ready to export, go to your file menu and click on package for web. Get this little packaging project message that comes up, followed by a packaging done. There's no real reason your project should take a long time to package. And if it's taking a long time to package, something's probably gone a little bit wrong. So you might want to try closing, clean, reopening it and trying to package it again. So you can also check the folder it exports to to see if it's already been exported and put there. Okay, so once the packaging is done, let's click on this button that says open this directory and see what we've got. So just to show you where it goes to, it goes into your documents, into your clint underscore v3 folder, into the folder with your project title, and into another folder. In a minute, I'm gonna upload this online. And what you have to do when you upload it is upload the whole folder, the whole published to web folder. And you should be able to see inside this published to web folder, we've got a series of files, including a copy of your Clint project. We've also got this index HTML file, which is what your browser is going to open up. And then we've got a folder with medias in, player and resources. Again, you need to copy everything from this folder onto your server when you upload it online. Okay, so let's have a look at how that process works. So to upload your project online, you're gonna to have to use either a file manager or FTP. I'm gonna use FTP to show you how this works. So here's my FTP client here. I'm using something called Cyberduck. There are lots of other FTP clients around, and basically what FTP does is it connects you to your website server so you can really easily upload files. Let me just go back. So here's my website, robmonday.co.uk. If I double click on this hard drive icon, this takes me into the server for my website. And basically what I have to do now is upload that packaged folder onto my server. But first I'm gonna make a new folder. And I'm gonna go file, new folder, I'm gonna call it freegan, and I'm gonna click create. I'm gonna double click on that to open it. And then, I'm going to take all of these files, drag them and drop them into my FTP client. And that will start the upload process. So that's going to take a little bit of time. I'm not going to make you sit there and watch the timer click down. I'll actually cut this out so it goes a bit quicker. Okay, and there we have it. All the files have now uploaded. So essentially what I should be able to do now is go into my browser and go to my website forward slash freegan. And if I hit enter, my documentary should start playing. And there we have our interactive documentary now uploaded online. I know I've glossed over that FTP process a little bit, but to have to go through how you go about buying a URL, buying hosting, and then getting your FTP details is quite a long process. I think that's best left for another time, uh, or hopefully you can just research that yourself and find out how you can do it. And like I said, I used, um, I used an FTP client called Cyberduck. There are lots of other FTP clients out there. All you're looking to basically do is use some kind of FTP client to transfer your files onto your server, and then you'll have your project online. There is no publish directly to web option on Klim, so you have to have your own hosting to put your documentary online. Okay, so just to go back to my Klim project for a minute, go back to my storyboard. So to kind of summarize, Klim is all about making sequences and linking them together. Within a sequence, you can add different elements to make it more interesting, so we can add buttons, text, but this is basically the important workspace for you when you're working in Clean. Your storyboard is really important for working out how you navigate around your documentary and how it flows.